My body is very weak, okay, very skinny. Because when I get born, my mother tell me not enough months I come out. That's why my body very weak. So it's called Kai Hong Gao Tou, chicken chest, dog stomach. You see the body like that? Okay, means like very weak at that time. So my Sifu, my Sifu is very good friend with my father. So he say, he want me to be his cousin. That's why he say, oh, I don't want my cousin too small, you know, too big. I want to bring him to Kung Fu. Then he bring me every day. Bring me go to Wa Tak Yip Yau Lok Se. And then my Sifu, still, my, my father still don't like it. So he argue with my father all the time. All the time, they yelling me, don't take my son. And then my Sifu, that's my son too. So he bring me to Watak Yip Yalong Se. I come to American is from uh, 1971, September 4. Okay, September 4 in a, in America in New York. I meet a friend. My friend is I know him in Hong Kong. He know a lot of gangsters in Chinatown. So he say, better go to teaching my friend. You know a lot of Kung Fu. So I teaching so, uh, about like 15 people. Teaching about like two weeks. And then they have trouble. They say, uh, Sifu, should we stop teaching? We run, we go away, we have trouble. So, after that, and then I stop teaching. One of the Sifu, Wei Hong, he make a tournament in Chinatown. So, he want me to be a judge and demo. So, on that time, okay, I promise him, and then I do the demo and help him to be a judge like that. So, and then after one week, and then Wei Hong called me. He say, oh, have one guy call you. He looking for you a long time. He want to learn from you. So what you do? I say, okay, I want to see the guy, who is it? So that is the guy is called 
Tan Lakum. If I go down to this address, it was on Canal Street. And again, like an old Kung Fu movie, there's this obscure doorway where the address is and a stairway with a naked light bulb at the head of it and a door. And I walk in and open the door and it's a loft with dry goods all over the place. I was the only white guy in the building then. He said, you want to learn? Okay, just wait a while and watch. I was totally mesmerized by it. I couldn't believe looking at this guy who walks down the street looking like he's carrying pails or something. And then when he starts moving, it's, as you know, it's transformation time. It's just mind-blowing. I don't know how long Sifu was in New York before I met him. I don't think it was too long. I knew he was working as a waiter in restaurants and doing the teaching and I knew this and I wanted and I just thought he somehow had to be this is what he had to do you know not wait in restaurants Don Lockett he said Sifu better make the school I said all right you go to you go to looking for space so after that and then I go to looking for the space the first one is in 28th Street I had convinced Sifu that you have to advertise and not down in Chinatown, advertise uptown. So I got him to make print ads for the Village Voice. In the Village Voice, I saw his ad and I said, oh, I'll go take a look at the school. And I saw him and I joined. Opened the school about one week and then Sifu See, so Jordan is joining. I trained six days a week, and Sundays I didn't train. Not long, about like about like uh, one or two months, and then one day joining. We got a pretty incredible mix of, uh, I guess, artistic people. Dancers, even movements, as you know, Sifu Pruska was Wanda Pruska, who danced with the Murray Lewis Owl Nikolai Dance Company. So Wanda and Sifu, up to now, 30 years already, still with me together. So up to now, Sifu is called Dai Si Heng. Wanda is Dai Si Jie. So everybody know about Bruce Lee. So from Bruce Lee, the movie, so the people understand about what is Kung Fu. So in, on that time, it suddenly Kung Fu, boom, build up. And then everybody want to learn Kung Fu, Kung Fu, Kung Fu. So it's like really good on that time is 1980. So before Kung Fu teaching, not many people not more than 10 Sifu in New York, okay? But after 1980, so up to now, maybe have 500 people teaching in New York. 500 people, believe or not. Ever since I was a little kid, I used to watch uh, The Green Hornet. I was impressed with Bruce Lee's uh, techniques. When I was a young boy, my mother used to take my brother and myself to 42nd Street, where they had the Kung Fu Theater, and we used to sit there and watch Kung Fu movies. I must have been about five, six, maybe younger, and I just fell in love with Kung Fu. You know, Kung Fu was uh, the TV show uh, at that point, um, you know, Bruce Lee was coming in. Shek Kin, you know, an Enter the Dragon, he was the one that wanted to take over the world, but he was one of the persons that did put a calligraphy on uh, Sifu's uh, book, which uh, is actually quite a high honor. Kung Fu now is very popular. 
nearly a kid already know about Kung Fu. But before only know about karate, taekwondo, judo, that kind of thing. I didn't know many people that knew Kung Fu. And truthfully, I did not respect Kung Fu. But now, since from 1980, the world, everybody know about what is Kung Fu. We got a steady 50, 55 students that were coming two, three times a week. Since the tournament, so uh, before is is no tournament. So since the tournament and then Benson and Cindy Lavra, they go to the tournament all the time. On that time, is Eagle Claw is very famous. Because of Benson and Cindy, they go to the tournament, always get the champion. There is a spirit to the Eagle Claw practitioner. It's like the bird. The bird is very proud, very agile, very nimble, flexible, he's fast, you know, he's, he maneuvers in space fairly quickly and, and at ease and smooth. So that's the, the characteristics of the practitioner. The Eagle Claw practitioner is very mobile, you know, has excellent footwork, it's high, it's low, it's in, it's out, it's linear, it's circular, you know, it is a very agile type style. My brother was first interested in Kung Fu and growing up with him we used to fight and I used to be able to beat him and then he started learning Kung Fu and uh, I had trouble beating him so I asked him what was a good school to go study in um, New York City and he had checked out all the schools in New York and he thought the Ying Chao Pai Kung Fu school was the best school so actually my brother referred me to a Sifu school on 28th Street. Cynthia Rothrock um, you know, is now a, you know, still a, a famous uh, uh, star and uh, studied privately with uh, Sifu. Many of her earlier action movies, uh, you can see definite you know, Ying Zhao-like uh, movements. Beginning is uh, Charlie Fat, I learned it, and uh, Hong Ka, I learned it, and uh, Monkey Style, I learned it, and then uh, Wing Chun, I also learned it. But most longer is Charlie Fat, and then the Seven Star Mantis, I also learned also. But since I go to learn about that system and then go back to my Sifu school sometime practice and then my Sifu uh, watch me to practice that and then really yelling me. He say, why you practice that? Because I learned from Jingmo Association. I learned every system already. You still follow me to go that? He say, because uh, system he he learned a lot of system but he last minute he only choosing ego claw and tai chi so he yelling me still follow him to wasting the time so tell me to quit immediately so from that time like 17 18 something like that and then i flow away i get no more and only keep is Eagle Claw and Tai Chi. Eagle Claw was originally was um, 108 fighting techniques. There is a fancy uh, style and the Yin Jiao Pai uh, style. 
The fancy is the, the more fancy footwork, the acrobatics, uh, aerial kicks, and gymnastics. In Japan, it was the, more the fighting aspect, uh, locking joints, uh, pressure points, uh, takedowns. So Aoshin uh, merged those two styles together, and that's what you know as Fancy in Japan. Fancy was what was added to the Eagle Claw system, or vice versa, whichever way you really want to look at it. Um, Fonzie is more, from what I learned, it's, it's a row form, it's a row style actually. And they added the clawing, the locking, and the principles of, and ideas of the eagle claw to it. General Nokfe was uh, the general in charge of the resistance against the Mongolian soldiers. And uh, he was the founder of the eagle claw system. Originally he had 108 fighting techniques that he taught his uh, soldiers. He was a uh, important figure in the Chinese history as a, as a soldier and a general who led the army against the Mongol warriors. And he brought his style of Eagle Claw, which consists of, at that time, of just basically the Chinna that he showed his uh, soldiers to defeat the Mongols. Um, what makes uh, Eagle Claw unique is the way that it's approached uh, in terms of the uh, Jinnad locking. Um, it's more of a, a continuous action as opposed to a one-stop uh, hit and lock. We, you know, Ying Zhao, uh, through its forms, uh, promote uh, uh, movement uh, so of, that if, if it's countered, you immediately uh, move into a, another motion. Chenna is locking, uh, joint manipulation, uh, attacking the pressure points, um, controlling and seizing your opponent. That's what is Chenna. Eagle Claw system and Tai Chi, when using for fighting, is uh, very close. So, Eagle Claw is catching, catching. Tai Chi sticky hand. So mostly using the same technique, everything the same thing. Using saw and hard power. Quick movement, okay? So from self-defense, same use. But the form is soft and hard is like Okay, Tai Chi is very soft. Eagle Claws, hard and soft. So both can use it together. Cooperation to use is the best. My Shifu tell me uh, he learned Kung Fu from uh, like 15 or 16 something. That time already learned Kung Fu. So he beginning his learn from Jing Mo Association. A lot of master in there. So beginning should be learned is like have ten basic form first. After you learn it, and then you can choose any system you want to learn. So from that time, he beginning is learn from Chan Ji Jing. Zhang Ji Cheng was also an important figure in our style because he's he put Eagle Claw basically uh, back in the back in that time he put it on the map. He made people realize that this was an, uh, an effective system by using three or two techniques to defeat opponents, and he even defeated over 100 Japanese soldiers when Japan was trying to take over China, and he defeated them by suffocation. Chen Ji Cheng, Eagle Claw, very famous at that time. So, but he teaching not long, but very short time, and then he go back, he have some important thing, he go back to his village. After that, and then uh, he, he sent Lao Phat Mang to instead his position. So Lao Phat Mang, and then begin the teaching in Jing Mo. So, okay, that time he already they learn some from Chen Ji Jing and continue learn from Lao Fa Mang. Lao Fa Mang have uh, many trained brothers 
he also practiced Ying Zhao in there. So they also learned from them too. But uh, Lao Fa Mang is a really Sifu of my Sifu. My Sifu really like Kung Fu. Even his business, he working, he don't care. His business is making shoes. Special good for the people practice Kung Fu. So this, this kind of shoes. He's a maker of that. Except the make shoes time, the other time is go to practice Kung Fu. He really like Kung Fu. And then uh, sometimes I fool around with him. So we fight him or something like that. He nearly one time, you know, one time, and then I do pull sand, Tai Chi pull sand with him. Wow, he make me nearly flow me to the to the street, like on the roof. Okay, we we practice on the roof in Hong Kong. The roof uh, is uh, like five floor or six floor building. So. They have an edge not too high, you know, up to the waist high, and that's it. So I push hand with him, suddenly I do something, and then boom! He pushed me, nearly flew me out. So at that time, and then uh, a little bit like, he yelled at me, next time to push hand, don't do like that. In Cantonese, it's called Tai Kekku. Mandarin is called Tai Chi Chuan. Understand about that. So, Tai Kekku is only uh, one kind of the very soft, relaxed system to go. Okay, that's called Tai Chi. Now, Tai Chi is have a circle, right? The circle inside have two spots there. This is called Leung Yi. Leung Yi. So, Tai Chi is the mother. He born, have a son, have a girl. So, they always running, running and never stop it. Never stop it. Okay? So, means like everything is from have a female and male, okay? So, yin and yang, all the ways, yin and yang. So, Tai Chi is from yin and yang. So, means like soft, then to be the heart. For example, like, uh, like the ship on the water. The ship is very heavy. Okay, stay on the water. The water flow the ship, but suddenly have a tornado wind. Can you see the wind? The wind is nothing. You can see it. All right. So when you turning tornado and then make the ship running or up and down, 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 be the ship, the water in here, so you can swing down the ship, go under the sea. So means like Tai Chi is you can see it how many powerful you don't know okay just like the wind just like the water the water is nothing right but why the ship stay stay the ship on top why the wind make a circle the tornado wind can make the tree flow you out okay the big tree growing up on the ground so they can flow him out. So Tai Chi, that is the power, very important. So when you learning Tai Chi, make your mind very clear and make your internal organs like heart, liver, kidney, intelligence, everything on the body. 
is very clear inside to growing up, big strong and strong. So make the people only get health because from the breathing exercise in and out, slowly breathing in, slowly breathing out. Okay, that kind of thing to be natural, make the body strong as you can. I remember my Sifu, okay, he teach me, it's like only one movement, pop, 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 pop. that's it, you go away. You don't know it? Next time come, come on, let me see it. Ah, no, see, watch again. And then, come on, do it. And then he go away already. So only one movement, one time, that's it. But in here, the people learning is not really smart, really. They're doing one, two, three, four, something like that, and then understanding. But when I learn it, it's big different. Punching is punching. One time, that's it. No other time. Okay? But in here, if I do like that, I think a lot of people quit. I remember is one of uh, of my elder twin brother. It's called Samman Law. Samman Law is a really kung fu, very good. And also he from uh, 1964 or three. That time he he got the invitation from. Uh, China have a competition. Competition is like uh, Chun Nang. It's completely system to go. It's called Chun Nang. Have a uh, long face, short face, long weapon, short weapon, uh, Tai Chi, uh, and Guan Do. So have seven, seven form to go. He get the he get the first place. So he's a very good Kung Fu. And my partner is called Sam Yu Jing. He's my partner. Okay, now he's a businessman. And then I still have a train brother, Mm Gok Lai, still in New York with me. He always come to school with me together. And now he also have a daughter, to, to learn from me too. The eagle cross system, important thing is how to make the hand strong and how to make the finger smooth. Okay, so eagle claw important is how to catch the people. Okay, catch the people. So when you use beginning, it's like see the hand very relaxed like a piece of cotton, okay? A piece of cotton, sticky on the, on the clothing. So you go like this way, right? But still there. So it means, means like soft and then you can stick it. If you hard to touch it, hard to catch it. The fighting strategy of eel claw is to stay close and to use the clawing techniques to control or push or pull the opponent. It's sometimes you can lock the opponent or sweep them or take them down. You know, it is a style that um, is, is, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of circular or direct techniques and, and high and low and sidestepping. So the style itself is designed to kind of confuse the opponent and then trap them or lock them or take them down. It is a very um, versatile type style with a wide range of techniques. But the clawing action of eagle claw is the key. So eagle claw system is catching and how to lock is a very important. So first one, you practice how to make the hand loose and how to catch him easy, right? And also eagle claw, important is the core. Why the, all the system, a lot of system, no core? Only eagle claw have a core. That's why eagle claw. So special thing is the finger. When you're fighting, 
like using the three hand. How do free hand? The catching is the other hand. You have two hands, I have two hands. But I pass my catching hand. That's called three hand. Three hand fighting. Always can use. So the first thing to go is how to catching. After catching, how to using the lock. Lock down. So if you want to hurt the people, you hurt so easy. If you don't want to, if you don't want to hurt, I want to control. Control him down, can move. That's enough. In Hong Kong, everybody come together, talking, eating, uh, maybe uh, fighting a little bit, uh, maybe do the form a little bit together. It's like really brother, sister. You know, so that's why I learned that kind of thing from my Sifu and then come to America to the same way. So I make everybody like the family. See, even right now, some of my students go away teaching already, they also do the same thing. Okay, family style. The school is like a family. He's been like a father to me. He's like my father. Sifu some to me is more like a father figure. He was sort of a, like a father to me. I think he created a family. He allowed people from all walks of life, from any color, race, creed, financial background, to come together, live together, uh, in a very harmonious situation that to this day, I feel very comfortable to go to, and I truly love. Um, I feel the family he's created is maybe transcends the fact that he teaches people how to fight. At the 20 year anniversary, when you looked over the audience of all his students over all of those years, black, white, yellow, there was no, absolutely no barriers in that regard. It wasn't even a question. I for one appreciated that. He, uh, yeah, even though sometimes he'll, he'll scream at you and, and uh, tell you what he really thinks, but He's always been there for us, for his, you know, his students, so he's meant a lot to me. He has, he has them, an ability that is not common, and yet he's a common person. Asifu Sum, I define him as a very wise person, honest, uh, generous, funny. And he always showed class. To people. He was always welcoming. There was nothing shut off about him. And that's what I liked about him. The man came from Hong Kong and wasn't even planning to teach. He was noticed by accident from when he was working in a restaurant. He has come from that to, to, to today when he has uh, hundreds and hundreds and I mean uh, and he went through thousands of people, thousands of students. Sifu Shum has uh, uh, branches throughout the whole world. And um, he's got branches in Greece, he's got branches in Puerto Rico, and Costa Rica, and South America, Paraguay, uh, United States and different states. So he's got a big family. Sifu Shum has created a family of Eagle Claw practitioners all around the world. And his particular lineage, I hope, will live on forever. Uh, he's meant so much to me and I'm sure to many, many people around the world. I tell you, I only enjoy my life. I like to go where I go. I go to visit some of the school, right? All, this, all the instructor school of Ying Jiao Pai, I should be go there. But if they want me to go, the best. Someday, I will finish around the world. to learn about Eagle Claw Kung Fu. Let's begin.
Tell us how what your true age is for the camera. What? You want to tell us your real age? I I forget it. Prepare a simo simo. Okay. Before Eagle Claw is really nobody, nobody teaching. When they come to America, that's why the first man bring to the American is called first generation. And then up to 30 years up to now, I have a second generation, means my student already teaching Eagle Cross. So maybe how long can I have a more generation to go, you know. So Eagle Claw should be make alive. Don't get die away. can say it's a very powerful and very crazy system but other things Eagle Claw is very kind very kind system I want to kill you I kill you I don't want to kill you I don't want to kill you so control by yourself that's why to be a seafood anyone okay so first one should be is inside the heart, okay, should be kind. <laughs> 